Hey folks, we often get comments on our videos saying stuff like, why do we use daily BMSs when there are so many other options and better options like Overkill Solar and uh, a bunch of other options that are out there. Why don't we use uh, BMSs that are active balances rather than passive balances? All these sort of questions. And uh, so I thought I would give you a very sort of high level uh, kind of overview of, of why we use uh, DALI uh, predominantly and why we offer that in our web store for our customers uh, to make their life a little bit easier uh, in terms of being able to source it and get support for it uh, from the UK rather than from China uh, and all of those sort of things. So if you don't know, uh, my name's Nigel, I'm from Off Grid Van Life and uh, we uh, run this channel to help our customers with all sorts of things related to van conversions and off grid electrical systems. And we also stock uh, lithium ion phosphate uh, components which we import from China and we stock them in the UK and distribute them and, and dispatch them from the UK. And so we do that uh, to help our customers uh, by being able to source it locally so you get it delivered way faster than if you were to buy it out of China. Obviously with these uh, lithium ion phosphate battery cells like I have charging here in the background, uh, if you were to order them from China you're looking at a minimum turnaround time of probably 45 days, more realistically 60 to 80 days to actually get that delivered to your door. So it's a long time that you're waiting whereas we have these stocked in the UK and get them to your door uh, within a couple of business days really and uh, so over the years we've worked a lot with these daily BMS's uh, we've installed a lot of them we've built a lot of batteries using them uh, and we, I often time and time again get comments on these videos on this channel from people saying oh why do we use daily they suck have you not read about them all this sort of stuff uh, and the funny thing is uh, the people that are making those comments generally speaking I would put hard money on the fact that they have not installed and configured as many of these daily BMS's as we have uh, and and as our team have uh, we've literally installed hundreds of these things and the thing with all of these sort of electrical components is there there are always going to be uh, a failure there, there will always be some products that come out and for whatever reason, whether it's user error, whether there was just a slight fault in the manufacturing process, whether one just slipped through the net in terms of the quality control, there is always going to be some level of failure. And um, I mean, I've shared about it with other components. We recently had a Guyandel inverter that failed and we're huge fans of those products. Uh, and we've made that very clear on this channel over the years. And so uh, even with a high quality product that's got good uh, quality control and a very good company in terms of customer service that backs it, uh, there is always going to be levels of failure. And so um, there are a bunch of different options that you have in terms of a BMS. So obviously we use DALI uh, a lot and uh, would tend to recommend that. Uh, in my van, one of the batteries I'm running in there uh, uses one of these systems. So this is a 123 electric, uh, 123 BMS, I think they call it. And so I've used this extensively for two years now, something like that. So one of the batteries in my van uh, runs this system. And I've covered it a little bit in, in other videos, but I mean, it's a bit of a faff to actually install this system because you have basically for each battery cell, you have the circuit board and there's just a lot of root uh, room for error in terms of shorting it and 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 damaging the circuitry on this if you don't know what you're doing and if you're not very careful and I'm fairly knowledgeable and, and relatively good in terms of precision when it comes to electrics uh, but even I was like quite daunted it's it is quite a complex system to install if you're doing a DIY battery um, and they're also very expensive compared so these systems uh, I can't remember the exact cost but they run somewhere in the region of sort of $400 I think somewhere around there uh, and so you could literally buy two or three uh, daily BMS's for the same price um, and then obviously you get the uh, overkill BMS so this is very popular uh, especially in the US uh, it is uh, built or it, is, it was at least designed and, and made by a US based company. Um, they are manufactured in China like all of these are pretty much all of these products are probably going to be manufactured in China. They may just be supported by other uh, companies. So Overkill for example 
They very clearly state on their website that they're manufactured in China, but they are supported by uh, their departments in Florida and, and Colorado. And so one of the benefits you have with an overkill uh, BMS is that you have somebody in the US that supports it. So uh, naturally your customer service is probably going to be better than what you would get out of Delhi, for example. Uh, 123 BMS or 123 electric. I believe that they are based in the Netherlands. Um, and so I can't fault these guys on their customer service. Uh, so when I've had problems with it, I had one particular board where something went wrong. I think I shorted something or something like that. And I messaged them and they said, send it to us in the post. We'll get one of our engineers to fix it and, and work around it. And then we'll post it back to you. And I think they literally just charged me the, the price to actually for the shipping. I, I don't think they even charged me the, the cost of, um, of fixing it and and when i did that i didn't even sort of link my youtube or our website or anything like that i'd literally just message them and their service was impeccable so i can't fault them for that and so that's one of the advantages you get with uh overkill and like one two three electric is that they are sort of european or us based and so the customer service is very good um Dali, uh, we have a, a very good relationship with Dali because we buy a lot of their products to then sell to our customers locally and to, to stock them locally in the UK. So we have a very good relationship with them. We get pretty good support from them. However, there is a definitely a gap in that um, often when we have problems or if we're trying to figure something out, a lot of the time we just have to figure it out ourselves or sort of troll the internet or it takes a long time to get answers out of Dali because the person, sort of the account manager that we deal with isn't technical, uh, so they have to... Uh, sort of reach out to their technical people and then we get stuff that just gets lost in translation and stuff like that. Um, so that's probably one of the faults and one of the things I don't like about dealing with Dali. Uh, but then again, Dali is a very big company. They're producing a lot of these BMSs, probably more than any other uh, BMS manufacturer. I don't know the numbers, but I would wager that they probably produce the most uh, BMSs. And uh, so they're a very big company. Uh, and what that means is that it means that they uh, are evolving their company probably faster than the other companies. Um, so they are able to fix things and, and iron stuff out probably a little bit faster than some of the others, uh, but not, not necessarily all the time. Sometimes being bigger doesn't help in that regard. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the other reasons why we go with Dali uh, for the most part rather than the others is just the diversity in terms of the capacity of their BMSs. So um, for these guys, for Overkill, they pretty much go work on the basis of 120 amps. Um, they, I, I, as far as I know, they don't offer any other capacity uh, changes. They just offer different uh, battery sizes in terms of the number of cells. Uh, so you can increase your voltage. Uh, so it's 120 amps across the board and you can do obviously 12 volt, 24 volt and 48 volt. Um, so in some regards that's nice because it keeps it simple. In other regards uh, you are limited. So 120 amps, if you were to build out a 12 volt battery, uh, realistically you're not even going to be able to run a 2000 watt invert on that. You're looking at like maximum pretty much 1500 watts. So you pretty much straight out the off the bat, there's no running an induction hub or cooktop or anything like that. Uh, you can do fairly basic stuff as far as an inverter is concerned on a 12 volt battery that you run a uh, overkill BMS with. Obviously, when you go up in your voltage, if you go to a 24 or a 48 volt, 120 amps is quite a lot and uh, at that voltage. And so you could run quite a lot with that. So then it becomes quite attractive. Um, uh, with one, two, three electric, similar sort of bottleneck and, and threshold. Um, their system is uh, maxed out at 100 amps. Uh, so same sort of thing. So what I did with my van is I just put two batteries in parallel, partly just to test that concept and see how that works, but also just to increase the capacity so that I could run reasonable size. Having said that, I don't need to run an induction hub or cooktop or anything like that. And so my needs as far as an inverter is concerned is fairly basic. Um, and so that brings us back to the Dali BMS. So we've worked with Dali BMS is all the way from 100 amps all the way to 350 amps, I think is the biggest Dali BMS that we've installed. We've also used their 12 volt, 24 volt and 48 volt models. 
And so one of the advantages and one of the reasons why we like that is it means that uh, it's a system that's familiar that we can get into sort of a rhythm in terms of support and installation, all that sort of stuff. And we can do a full range of uh, amperages. And granted, you might say, well, if you only need 100 amps, then wh why do you even bother having other options and things like that? But it just, it's nice for our customers to have the option that they can choose. So if they have very high draw requirements, then they can get a 300 amp uh, BMS to put on their battery if they're building a DIY battery and equally if we're building the battery for them we can offer them uh, higher amperage BMSs. So if, if you have a high draw requirement i.e. you need to run an induction cooktop you need to be able to run like a 3000 watt inverter that's going to pull sort of 250 amps then realistically DALI is probably one of your best options for that. Yes there are other uh, BMS manufacturers who some may argue are better uh, but DALI would be a great choice for that. Um, one of the benefits that uh, Overkill has over DALI is that their uh, draw requirements, so, so the 120 amps, that's for both charge and discharge of your battery, which is quite a, an attractive thing. Uh, so one of the things that a lot of people don't realize with DALI is that for some reason, and I don't know the technical reason why but uh, whatever your rating is on it so this is a 200 amp bms your discharge on this bms is half of the of the sorry your, your charge your charge uh, amperage is half of your discharge amperage so you can discharge continuously at 200 amps with this bms but you can only charge your battery at 100 amps and for the most part for most people that doesn't matter because most people are not going to i mean 100 amps is a lot uh, and even if you have a, a 150 amp BMS on your battery, charging at 75 amps is a lot. Most people won't have that. I mean, most people in a van or an RV or something are not going to have um, a charge from solar at 75 amps or even a um, EHU a shore power charge at 75 amps. Most people are going to be charging probably 30, 40, 50 amps, somewhere around there. So for the most part, that doesn't really matter. But I do quite like that about the Overkill BMS. Uh, <coughs> that it, it doesn't sort of limit the charge uh, capacity and capability of the BMS. Um, and then um, one other thing, so some people will fault the DALI BMS saying, well, it's a passive balancer, it only, only balances when you charge. Uh, and that's the case for all of these three options that I have here. So the DALI BMS is a passive, BM, uh, passive balancer. It only balances your cells when you charge. The same with the 123 electric and exactly the same with the overkill uh, BMS. Now I understand that you can change the settings in the overkill BMS to balance uh, in different ways. I've never explored that because to be honest for the most part uh, I've never never had a problem with uh, the cells being out of balance or and the delta between the cells being uh, massive. Uh, generally speaking, if you have that problem, then you have a problem with your cells in that maybe one or two or whatever are uh, slightly degraded or damaged or something, uh, or your cells are just not evenly matched. And uh, for the most part, in the way that I use my van is that it doesn't really matter if it's a passive balancer because I'm drawing power from the battery and then I'm charging it pretty much on a daily basis or very regularly. So it's very rare that I'll have my battery sitting at 100% state of charge and where there'll be the opportunity for the cells to go out of balance enough where it's going to cause problems. Uh, and so uh, that argument of it being sort of a passive balancer and it's not very good at balancing and it only balances when you're charging, um, for my experience, that's never been a problem. So if I did notice it as a problem, if I looked on the app and then saw, okay, my um, I'm getting sort of a high voltage warning on one of the cells often, uh, in that case, I would look, I would investigate that. And that's what I would recommend you do. So I would probably take that battery out, disconnect everything, probably uh, re-top balance the cells, do some tests, check to see if there is a problem with one of the cells maybe the internal resistance on one of the cells is different to the others or whatever the case is as to why it's performing differently like that and you're having that problem um, uh, and then obviously there's other options that you could add as well in terms of um, putting a pa uh, an active balancer on there 
Uh, and so I have actually the battery that I have in my van where I am running the 123 electric uh, BMS. I have a passive balancer, sorry, an active balancer on that battery as well as the BMS. And to be honest, I have not noticed any performance difference on that battery. Uh, like I said, I use the battery, I turn the, the inverter on, I discharge the battery, I then run the vehicle or the solar charges it or whatever. And half the time I don't even check uh, to see what the state of charge is of the battery. Um, the reality is, is once you've got it installed, very rarely with any of these options, are you going to be needing to pull it out and change things and things like that. If you've installed it correctly uh, and you've bought good quality cells, then realistically, um, I think any of these options would be a great choice uh, for the most part, as long as there's no sort of inherent fault with the particular one that you've bought, i.e. there's there's not a manufacturing error or something like that. For the most part, you'll probably be sweet and won't look back. And for most of us, with these cells that are getting in the region of four or 5,000 uh, ch cycles, charge cycles, uh, for the most part, uh, we are never gonna see the full lifespan of that battery uh, anyway, because it's gonna last us over 10 years, even if we discharge it completely every day and recharge it every day. So yeah, that's my thoughts on these uh, options. I am going to be building a, a, the battery, uh, a battery with this uh, Overkill BMS. I actually bought this Overkill BMS like two years ago. I've had it just sitting on the shelf and I'd forgotten about it. And then I kept getting these comments about why don't we use a different BMS? Why are we using Daddy? Daddy's rubbish. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, I've got that Overkill BMS. I really should dig it out and uh, build a battery with it. So these cells right here are uh, just... Some arbitrary cells, um, they not great cells in the sense that they didn't uh, pull full capacity and I lost the arbitration with the uh, seller of those and so I am going to be building a workshop battery with those and I'm going to use the Overkill BMS. So if you're interested in that then make sure you subscribe and stick around. I'm going to be doing that over the next uh, couple of weeks and I will of course put the video out here on the channel. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.